In the last video of this View, Viewtify and Firebase project series, we successfully created our signup form and we initialized Firebase in our main.js file. We did create that Firebase project. These are very important steps. In this video, I'll now make sure that once we click sign up here, something happens and we do actually sign up on Firebase and that we also get a working sign-in process. So let's start working on that. Regarding the sign up process, we already came pretty far. We got an on sign up method where we're not doing anything yet though. But here, I'll now simply hook it up by going to my form and listening to add submit. So to that native submit event, where we then call the prevent modifier to prevent the default. And here, I'll now call on sign up that method we specified down there without the parentheses here, just a pointer is all we need. Now, if I save this and let it reload here, if I do sign up, you now see we get this object, which looks pretty fine. looks like the values I actually entered there. Now I want to use these values to now also send them to Firebase and create a new user there. Now we're already initializing Firebase, but I want to manage that sign up process in my store, in my Vuex store here. For that, I'll first of all create a new action and I'll name that action sign user up. Of course, you can choose any name you like. Here we get an object where I'll extract the commit method and we get a payload that will be an object with the password and the email. And now what I want to do here is I want to use Firebase and there are the authentication features. So for that in my store file, I'll import everything as Firebase from Firebase. So using that Firebase SDK and now in sign user up, I'll use Firebase off. Notice that off is a method. That's important. Don't forget the parentheses there. And then we have the create user with email and password method, which sounds pretty much like what we need here. This is a method which will behind the scenes then reach out to the Firebase servers, send our data there, validate it on the servers, create a new user if it is valid, send an error message otherwise, and well, allow us to have a new user then. All we need to do is we need to send the email and password. Now I expect to get it in my payload. Here I expect to have an email property and a password property. We don't need to send the confirm password because we already did validate that passwords were equal and it's just a nice UI feature. It's not something we have to check on the server side therefore. Now that actually returns us a promise. So we can call then on the return result of that method here. And this will be executed if it was successful. Here we will then receive the user as a returned value and we can then use this user to store it in our store. So in the mutations, I'll actually create a new mutation which I'll name set user where I get the state and the payload. And there I now also want to adjust my state. Here I have the user. So I will call state then overwrite my user with the payload and I expect to get a user object having an ID and registered meetups array as a payload. And since you're the one writing the application, that is something you can control. So I want to set the user here. The user I get back from Firebase is not in that format though. It does have different fields which I'm not interested in and it doesn't have a registered meetup field in which I would be interested in though. So what I will do here is whenever I get a new user when signing up, this user certainly isn't registered for any meetups because it's a brand new user. So what I can do is I can simply create a new user constant here, which is a JavaScript object where I store the ID. Now I can get the ID from the user returned by Firebase. It will have a UID field, a unique ID field, and it's called UID. So make sure to not mistype that. And I can set my registered meetups here simply to an empty array because a brand new user again won't have any registered meetups yet. So then we have the same format as here and we set our user to that. With that, we now have a user. I also want to catch any potential errors we might get in the catch block of this um, promise. 
Here we get any error the server might throw. For example, if the password is not long enough, then we will get an error. And managing this, these errors is something I also want to do in the future. For now, I will simply log it. So we see it here, but we will add UI functionality to manage errors in future videos too. We're not using the new user constant yet though. Here, of course, we need to commit set user. So that new mut mutation we just created and pass our newly created new user object as a payload to that. So with that, we now have a Vuex function which allows us, or action which allows us to create a user. Let's see if that works by going back to sign up here. And there in the on sign up method, I now no longer want to simply log it to the console. Instead here, I'll reach out to my store, call this patch. And here I want to dispatch the function, the action we just created, sign user up, pass it as a string value and pass the payload, which if you remember, is an object where we access the email and the password property. So we need to pass such an object to that action. So here I'll pass an object where we have an email referring to this email. So to the email stored in our data object and then a password referring to this password. And again, make sure to not mistype these property names because you are accessing them in your store here, email and password. So with that, we're dispatching this action. Let's now see if that works back in our application. Let's create a new user and click sign up. And we don't get anything. So that did it work. Well, let's go to our Firebase console under authentication. And let's refresh this page. And indeed, we see a brand new user here. If you get the view developer tools installed, which I can strongly recommend, it's a Chrome extension. You can also check your Vuex state here by clicking on this icon. And there you should also see that a user is there with an empty array, which clearly is not the dummy user we're starting with, with a unique ID, which should match the ID you see here. And it does in my case. So that did work. If we try to create a user with a very short password, I think six characters is the minimum from Firebase side. That's a too short password. If I click sign up here, we do get an error. That's this catch block with the message, with the error message. Now, as I said, I will manage this in a future video. For now, we got a working sign up process. We're not reflecting this anywhere in our application though. Neither does our navigation change. So the items we display here, nor do we redirect up on a successful um, sign up. So that is something we definitely can and should do too. To manage that, we need a getter, which allows us to get our user and therefore register if we do have a user signed in, no matter if that was created by the sign in process, which we didn't implement yet, or the sign up process. For that, I'll first of all go to my store and set the default user here to null so that we don't start with a user in our application. As a next step, I'll add a getter, which I'll simply name user, get my state and simply return state user. So that's all. I simply return the user here from my Vuex store. Now in the signup.view file, I'll add a new computed property, name it user here too. And here I will simply return this store getters user, referring to that user getter we just created. Now, as a next step, I'll add a watcher using that watch property on our view component instance. And I will watch this user computed property. And there I will get it as a value whenever it changes. So whenever the getter gives us a new state here, I will now check if value is not equal to null anymore. And if value is also not equal to undefined. In this case, I know that I have a user and then I want to use this router push to redirect to the root page. This should redirect us after a successful sign up. And we can do this or test this by using another different email address, entering this sign up and I am redirected. So I get a first indication that it did work. 
Now, of course, it would also be nice if we would change our items here in the header. Now we can do this too, of course. We can go to simply go to the app.view file where we do have our header. And there, remember that we output all menu items dynamically with loops through menu items here. Now, menu items no longer should be a static array stored in data as it is here. Instead, it makes more sense to make it a computed property which depends on the authentication status because that will change our menu. So here, under computed, I now want to adjust my menu and output a different menu for authenticated and unauthenticated users. So here, I'll add a menu items name as a computer property. So it's a method here, but that is then the property which you can access. And there, I'll cut the code from my data property. There, I could return my array, but instead, I will create a new variable named menu items or any name you like actually, which will be your array, but now here, that should be the default case where we are not logged in. So here I will remove the top three elements so that we only have the sign up and sign in links. Then I will check if our user is authenticated. I'll need to implement that logic. Then in this case, I want to adjust my menu items variable to return everything but the sign up and sign in links. And then with that, I can return menu items in the end. Now all that's missing is to check whether we are authenticated or not. Now for that, I'll add a new computed property, which I'll name user is authenticated. That is a computed property where I will simply use my store again. So reach out to the store, gathers to the user. And if that's not equal to null, and if this store gathers user is also not equal to undefined, just to handle all possible cases, then we have a user, then we are authenticated. So that is what I'll check here. If this user is authenticated. The computer property we created here. Don't execute it as a method, just refer to it as a property because that is what Vue.js will turn it into. So with that, we have a menu which should adjust. Now let's try it out. We do indeed see only the menu items relevant to us because we are logged in. If I reload the application though, and we are not logged in anymore, we see sign up and sign in. Speaking of that, let's implement the sign in process then. For that, I'll go to my sign up page and copy all the code and copy it into my sign in view file. And yes, you could create like a wrapping component to save some code, but I will also change significant parts of the sign in page. For example, I'll get rid of the whole uh, section for confirming the password. That's not relevant to me if we are signing in because there you don't need to confirm your password. I'll adjust the button text here to sign in. I'll name the method here on sign in instead of on sign up. Also adjust it down there. And I also am not interested in comparing passwords anymore because we're not doing any password confirmation here. I'll leave the rest for now. I certainly also want to redirect if the user is signed in. Don't need the confirm password field here though. In on sign in down there, yeah, here it was written correctly. So here I want to dispatch a different method though. I want to dispatch an action where we sign a user in and not up. For that, I'll go back to my store and I'll add a new action, which I'll name sign user in. Here, I'll again get my commit method and a payload. Payload should again be an object which holds an email and a password. I can now also use Firebase again, execute off to get access to the authentication features. And now I can call sign in with email and password. And I pass an email and a password to that method. So that should do the trick. This also returns a promise which can fail or of course succeed. If it succeeds, we again get the user and there we pretty much do the same as we did up here. So I create a new user. Of course, that's not a new user, but a recurring one. But for the currently loaded application, it is a new one because we didn't have a signed in user before. So now here I have a new user. I will call set user here with the new user. 
of course you would be right in assuming that we somehow need to fill the registered meetups though because a user who does sign in might already be registered for some meetups. I will take care about this later once we do have a functionality to register for meetups. So for now I will leave it as it is. And I also want to catch, whoops, catch any errors we might get. So here for now I will also simply log that to the console. I will handle this differently in the future just as I promised for signing users up. With the sign in process finished here or with the action added, I now can go back to the sign in dot view file and make sure to also finish everything here. For example, I want to dispatch an action to sign user in. I still pass email and password as I need it there. I still want to listen in changes in the user and redirect whenever the user does sign in. So with that, let's see if that works. Let's compile the application. Let's click on sign in and let's use one of the users we created. So I'll do that, sign in. I am redirected. We can certainly still improve the UI, for example, show a spinner while we are signing in. We will do all of that, but for now we get a working sign in and sign up process. We do adjust our menu depending on it. We do have the user stored in UX. Now with that we can move on and either improve our UI and we will do this in future videos or we can also of course now start working on creating meetups and mapping them to users, registering for meetups, all that stuff. A lot of work ahead of us, but we're now getting into the real interesting Firebase plus View Beautify stuff. Really excited to get into that with you, so let's move on.